You know, there's a race to outdo the guy next to you. Mm -hmm. And this guy can do this, so I have to do that plus, plus something else, you know? And that's a very unmusical way to go about doing anything behind any instrument. Make things simple, make, try, to, try to take words out. I'm based, I'm, my thing is based on subtraction and simplicity. I think I'm done. I think I'm done here. No, right? you've said have that three anything? times now. We're, we have a lot of time left. <laughs>
Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, I love my job. Thank you. Good night. Ladies and gentlemen, Tommy Igo. I can't believe you're on Drumio. Man, I, for years. For a long we, time. For a long time, we, we tried to do this. For years, we've, I've been studying your stuff. Me and Dave always talk about about this inside of Drumio with all of our lessons. Well, that's all I have to show you. That's it. <laughs> that was everything in one tune that I know. You're welcome. <laughs> I can't, and I can't believe you're here on Drumio. I, I seriously love my job. So thank you so much for coming out. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Thanks. So if you don't know who Tommy is, you probably have, have uh, studied in his books, even unknowingly. He's author of Groove Essentials 1 and 2 and Great Hands for a Lifetime. Both are excellent and best-selling products, which you know. So we we here at Drummy are are going after you, trying to uh, trying to be, get the best-selling. <laughs> You're coming for me. Good luck, baby. I know. Right? You won't believe what's coming out next year. Uh, so, I got a better idea. Let's do something together. Yeah, yeah. We'll figure that out. Um, so he's a, he's a huge personality, and you know. All I know about this lesson is the title, because he just missed, he just likes to just go for it. So I'm like, what, what songs are you playing? Tell me, ah, I don't know, what, what do you want me to play? I don't know, I don't know. Yeah. So uh, you played on the Broadway, Lion King, Birdland, Big Band in New York. You have uh, Tommy Igo's Groove Conspiracy. That's in San Francisco. In San Francisco. Mm -hmm. um, and so you got, you're always doing something, and as well as teaching privately. Yeah, yeah, I have like four bands that are running currently, Right. you know. Um, I just uh, did a tour of the uh, uh, United States, the, South, uh, the East Coast and Midwest with a band called the Berlin All-Stars, which was half a band from the West Coast, half a band from the East Coast. Nice. With a live, um, with a live painter on stage with us. Huh. Painting, you know, so we would, um, so, so, so this is how I roll. I never get, I don't plan anything, yeah. you know. Uh, I think the best stuff comes from uh, fear, danger, and improvisation. Wow. So uh, uh, the band doesn't know what we're going to play before we go on. And, you know, and, uh, if I call a set list, it's 90 seconds before the show. That's and awesome. uh, so the painter had no idea what we were doing. So he would paint new stuff every night. That's great. You know, and then we'd uh, you know auction it off at the end of the show and stuff. So it was really cool. That's super cool. I want to take a moment to thank the the sponsors for this lesson. Big shout out to Yamaha, all the the people there, Sean, Ryan, Ken, uh, Omar, and, and and everyone with Yamaha has always been so supportive of us. Uh, Zildjian, Vic Firth, Remo, uh, definitely check out the, check out those uh, companies. They make some great products. Uh, you also should check out Tommy online. He's it's pretty much at Tommy Igo for Facebook, Instagram, and uh, Twitter. Yeah, so you know, the great thing of having an unusual name, just look Tommy Igo, and <laughs> yeah, there it you is. Don't, you don't know? see it all. <laughs> yeah, it isn't like, you know, you know, somebody with like a really, you know, Steve Johnson or somebody like, you know, like, you know, Mike something. Mike Davis. Like, yes, exactly, Mike Davis. <laughs> There's a lot of Mike Davises. Nice. Steve Smith. Yes. There's a lot of Steve Smiths. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you like Drumio, we'd love for you to check it out. Go to drumio.com slash trial. You can get a free seven-day trial. We, we are streaming live all the time and doing all kinds of cool things inside of Drumio. That said, let's get into this, bud. We got great hands for groove essentials. Great, this, it, this is like the perfect title. Yeah, it's great hands for groove essentials. Well, we're thinking about, because you know, we're going to do a thing tomorrow. And yeah. it, you know, so uh, those two titles are kind of the titans of their respective right. genres. You know, so. How about we do, you know, because one is not, you know, they relate to each other, you know, right. and, uh, you know, Great Hands is built on a, a, a foundation of technique that's, you know, rooted in relaxation and musicianship. Yeah. And Groove Essentials, uh, at some point in every drummer's development, you're going to butt up against a technique problem, mm -hmm. almost always. You know, it's either going to be something for speed or musicality, dynamics, yeah. you know, phrasing. Uh, so why not combine it together because they are completely related. Yeah, and you, know? you have a like, uh, you have a drumline background. So I do. You, you, you I have do. studied the the technical side, and then you also are an act, very very active player as well. Yeah. So I well, I mean, my thing is like I am a, a player who teaches. Yeah. I'm not a teacher who also plays. Yeah. I, you know, I've made my whole foundation in uh, playing and performing music, right. and. Uh, that's, you know, it's, it, that's probably one of the biggest disclaimers to probably put out. Like, you know, so technique, uh, like the only reason I do single surface practice on a pad is to serve this instrument. Mm -hmm. Like I don't do anything to just, you know, work on chops for chop's sake. Mm -hmm. uh, everything is built around moving to the drum set mm -hmm. and phrasing on the drum set and using your technique as a way of expression on the instrument. Yeah. You know. 
Cool. Now, a lot of people say that, but then they it, it, there's like there's a lot of you know the, the this like kind of like you know beastie you know like you know gladiator esque you know who's got the fastest the fastest, the fastest gun in the West yeah you yeah, know yeah. and uh, you know that comes uh, you know it's uh, we're getting to the point on our instrument where um, the limits of human endurance are starting to we're starting to butt up against it. It's like when you look at like Rafael Nadal playing tennis, like he's got, he hits the ball so violently. Right. You know, uh, you might be able to get maybe another half mile per hour out of it from some of the guy or something like that. But yeah. you know, there's we're getting to the point now where guys are just you know there's only one thing left and that's to set the drums on fire. You know, <laughs> you know. So they're doing that. Yeah. So right, exactly. You know, so like technique has got to be serve a musical uh, goal and. You know that usually that has to do with what kind of music you want to play. So yeah. guys who are playing blast speed metal are going to have a different set of goals than guys who are going to be playing jazz and funk and R and B. Right. Yeah. Huh. So how do you how do you balance this and how do you know what to do and, and what and when to do it? Um, you, well, you know for the the first thing you have to be able to do is play at all. Right. You know, and the thing I see a lot with, uh, especially with you know the onslaught of social media coming at everyone, yeah. is that there is this kind of race to outdo everybody. You know, there's a race to outdo the guy next to you, mm -hmm. and this guy can do this, so I have to do that plus plus something else. You know, and that's a very unmusical way to go about doing anything behind any instrument. Yeah. Now that's going on everywhere, but the drums, as usual, uh, are magnified. You know, we play a very physical, uh, violent almost instrument sometimes, and right. it's very easy to get into that gladiator-esque, you know, mindset, you know. Right. And, uh, you know, for me, that doesn't do anything for me musically. And music is why I'm here. So I only play with other musicians. Mm -hmm. You know, the, that track you just heard, every single note was played by a real musician. That was just off my last record, I just took the drums off and I tried to not ruin it <laughs> when I was playing it. But it was all like, so the time moved, it wasn't like with a click, you know, and it was very organic and that's what I am. And I know what I am. And like, so you're not gonna see me giving lessons on playing double bass drum speed blast beats on a death metal band, that's not right. what I do, you know. So, you know, I know who I am, I know what I offer. And um, the fundamentals of great technique, I believe, are the same for just about everybody. Now, where you want to take those fundamentals, that's where we our paths start to change. Okay, mm -hmm. but the fundamentals, really, uh, having a healthy uh, start to the instrument, I think, is actually uh, the key to being able to play the instrument for decades, health healthy yeah. without injury. So, what are the fundamentals of great technique? Well, if you, so I'm assuming a few people probably have seen Great Hands for a Lifetime. So Great Hands for a Lifetime starts out, uh, I don't teach Moeller or any, I'm not a proponent of any name brand method. Mm -hmm. um, and just, I just gotta tell a funny story about Moeller, okay? Now, uh, Sanford Gus Moeller, you know, and so the Moeller technique was always around, mm -hmm. always. And uh, when I was a kid coming up, you know, I took lessons with my dad and, you know, a bunch of other guys, you know, Dennis Delucia was my mentor and stuff, you know, so all these guys in drum corps, they were all, you know, you know, you'd hear the name, Moeller, be like a thing, you know, oh yeah, oh the Moeller technique, oh yeah, the Moeller, oh yeah, right. the Moeller technique, right. right, right, you know, lift and the whip and the thing and a whole lot, right. And now it's become a fetish. Uh, amongst drummers who are like, you know, who make it like a way of life. Yeah. Do you do molar? Molar. <laughs> I'm gonna put that yeah. on Instagram. Yeah, it's just like, it's like, it's molar like, that's what, it's like, it's fetish. becoming like, you know, it's like, well, I, I do molar technique. It's like, what are you talking about? Right. What is, what is, what happened? And I know what happened. The internet happened. Yeah. And branding math happened. And a couple of famous drummers says that, well, I discovered this thing. Now, I discovered this thing when I was in, in the 1970s when I was five years old. And it's like, you know, and I was like, oh, here's the Molotek key, it's based on this, and boom, and it was it was just like a thing. It wasn't like a way of life, mm -hmm. you know? So the whole name brand method thing is something I do not use. I but I I use the whole whip thing, you know, the whip and rebound and all that, all yeah. that good stuff. But I, there's only three strokes in my universe. That's it. So I should probably let everyone know my uh, educational uh, philosophy is built on simplicity. And um, if you're trying to make things simple, uh, you actually take the handcuffs off your students, okay? Make things simple, make, try, to, try to take words out. I'm based, uh, my thing is based on subtraction and simplicity. Yeah. So in my universe, there are only three strokes. Rebound, taps, and accents. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's all you need, you know? So for rebounds, right, if you're just looking, you know, without going into 
you know, ultra basic stuff. If you're going to be playing match grip, you have a fulcrum here, three, four, five, stick goes down the palm, you're over the top. So if you look like this, it's wrong. If you look like this, if you look like this, you look like this, it's wrong. You go like this, nice, right here, you're playing right here. So now the, most, the biggest mistake I see most people make when they start to physically play. If I said, okay, Jared, uh, I would give me a drum lesson, you would say, okay, fine, you know, so show me how to hold my stick. And you'd say, like most people do, well, you hold it here and you have a fulcrum, right. okay? And I say, what is a fulcrum? All right, now at that point, I lose 50% of my audience, okay? And they right. say, uh, fulcrum is, uh, you know, it's a fulcrum thing, all right? <laughs> well, as an English word, it's a balance point on a lever, okay? So a seesaw is probably the e easiest, uh, easiest, uh, uh, example of a fulcrum, you know, teeter totter, right? Yeah. So here's your fulcrum. They say, I have a fulcrum right here, and then I play. And then they use their wrist and they go like this, okay? Well, when you do that, your wrist is the fulcrum, and you're not using a fulcrum here, mm -hmm. okay? So if you have to let this go and let the stick get away, the back of the stick has to move away from the hand, okay? And then that means you have a fulcrum here, okay? Now your, full, your entire body is made of fulcrums. Fulcrum, 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 fulcrum. Every single one of your digits on your fingers is a fulcrum. We can go crazy talking about that, but we don't need to do that. The point is, is that you want to let things bounce inside this fulcrum here. So we're going to use a first class fulcrum, which is a seesaw, which means you have positive and negative on either side of the fulcrum, right? Positive and negative. So as opposed to a second class fulcrum, which is this. Right. That's a door. A door opening and closing on its hinge. That is a second class fulcrum. The door closes, the door opens. There's no negative, it's only positive from the hinge. Mm -hmm. That's what we don't want. So if you're playing like this and you're just doing rebound strokes, eight on a hand, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Just that, so that exercise is literally the very first thing I teach everybody. Okay, I don't do I don't do anything like half up down or anything like that. All we do is bounce, like bouncing a ball. That's all we do. And we're looking for symmetry using match grip on both sides. So if you're going to 12 o'clock, is right here. You're on either side of your 12 o'clock, and you want the six to sound the same. So here's something that's not good. So the left is completely different than the right, which is a totally normal thing, and because we all, almost all of us have a dominant side, whether it's left or right. So you're gonna work on the side that's not dominant to get it as fluid and as natural as the other side. All right, so after we do these beginning exercises, the next thing we learn is an accent exercise, okay? And that's where the, the molar group comes in. Molar, shh, molar, okay? All right, when you go, do, 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 boop, bop. Okay, we're not gonna do that though. All right, just whip, just do a whip. Everybody knows what a whip is, whip. Okay, boom, all right? Now, when you play the whip and you leave the tip down, you're set up for the, an unaccented note, which is called a tap. Yeah. Okay? That's all you need to know. And then a tap. So the first exercise is... Now, all these beautiful natural things happen without even telling the students. They start prepping for their whip on their own. Mm -hmm because the next note is loud. So if you leave them alone and just say, look at me, look at me and look at you, look at me look at you, just go back and forth. They start to naturally start to lift on their own without making an actual physical device that you have to do. Yeah. So again, simplicity and subtraction, we're trying to get, technique should be transparent. Yeah. We're trying to get our technique to be as transparent as we can. So anything you say, you on this instrument. You don't want people to think, wow, technique, holy technique, that's some technique. Drummers think that way, yeah. musicians don't. Drummers think that way, musicians don't. And you don't want, you know, this is a problem that we have a lot of times, especially when young people are coming up, and it's, again, with social media, they have different uh, challenges than we had when we were coming up. They are, um, uh, you know, getting likes from other drummers. Other drummers are leaving very drummer-esque comments and drummer-esque yeah. criticisms, and they're not a lot of times musical criticisms. They're right. just more like, you know, drumming criticisms. Yeah. And so drummers are, th you know, drunk drummers are thinking very drumistically and not musically. Yeah. And you want to try to keep it as rooted in the music. So that simple exercise right there. So if you go into the kit, you want. to see 
see how it goes through a four grouping R&B thing. Yeah. The second exercise is this. the classic push pull, right? When you shank, tip, shank, tip, shank, tip. So we don't need to overemphasize the motion in the wrist because the student is going to naturally see it. So, and Brazilian, which leads us to like this technique, leads you, if you go through the Groove Essentials, the last grouping is world music. Right. And if you're looking at a Brazilian thing, so I studied with a Brazilian guy named Porcino. And this guy, man, he just kicked my butt, like in terms of like being able to play like sambas and Brazilian stuff. And, and he just had this way of playing that was distinctly not American. And I remember listening to it and being completely hypnotized by the way. And he would just, you know, it's the same drum set like I'm playing, right? But he got a completely different sound out of it. And I got me so frustrated. I was like, how does he do that, you know? So I begged him for lessons and he took me under his wing and gave me some lessons, you know, and stuff. And it, was, it didn't take very long to figure out that it was much more mental than it was anything physical. Yeah. It's all, it was all mindset. And, and he plays like a percussionist. He plays like, a, you know, and he, he can pick up a pandero and go, fuck it, you could you that, you know, and, you know, so it's, it's, so this instrument has had all this color and depth, you know. So, and he started, you know, this kind of thing right here. You notice that the, the, you're doing a push pull, but the stick is staying in exactly the same spot. Yeah. So you're not. So great technique, so when great hands, we go through dynamic uh, changes and, and all that stuff. Yeah. And you're looking at stick height. So you can see that it just stays there. So that, that sound has got to sound shaker esque you know, or Pandero-y. Yeah, that sounds, that sounds great, I know. So, any, so the the idea of having transparent technique, which is where we were going all this stuff in the right. beginning, and how does Groove Essential starts out? It starts out with simplicity. It starts out with three strokes, and it starts out with the idea of technique being transparent behind the music. Right. All right. So there, right. I'm done. That's 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 it. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> no, let's go into before you, uh, when you were warming up. You were playing this this song, and the song. Um, you said this is a, song, a great song for the left hand stuff. Yeah, okay. it was there was a uh, it was a shuffle. So that that was actually a groove I wrote for the Lion King. All right. Yeah. So Lion King was written. Um, some people might have heard me tell the story uh, when uh, Lion King was written. I was kind of brought on uh, as a last resort <laughs> because uh, they were trying to do it with only percussion mm -hmm. and um, uh, it didn't work. You know because it's Elton John songs with African stuff, it's not African stuff with Elton John songs. So yeah. the, the backbeat and the Elton John stuff is first and then they layer the African percussion on top of it. Yeah. So, uh, but with that said, I couldn't play the drum set like a, you know, like a, a pop drummer. Every time I touch a cymbal or did something normal. Yeah, drummy. They, yeah, drummy, <laughs> drummy o -y, right? Uh, I would, uh, they would stop and right. say, hey man, no, it sounds out of place, you know. Huh. So we had all these grooves, and you know, one of them was a shuffle, and it was, you know, it was, wasn't really written for the drum set. So I came up with this. Uh, I came up with this thing that was based on the drums. And it was rideless, you know. You know, and you know, rideless grooves. Rideless grooves are not new. Okay, so I want to make that very clear. The the way I'm doing it on this instrument is um, a little unique, you know, for my application. But drumless grooves have been around forever. You know, uh, I mean, uh, rideless grooves. Mm -hmm. I mean, the ride cymbal is a relatively recent invention. You know, all drummers used to play, that's why drummers used to have fantastic press rolls. Mm -hmm. They used to play time like that. Mm -hmm. You know, and then they had a thing called a low boy. Before they had a hi hat, they had a low boy. Yeah. Yeah. And I had my uh, temple blocks and the whole thing, and the <laughs> woo, and the whistle. You know, <laughs> I 
Have you seen yeah. that video online of that guy pulling yeah. that chair? That's awesome. <laughs> I would love to yeah, It was like, that. you know, those guys, you know, a drummer and a piano player for silent movie houses. You know, they would yeah. just, you know, they would have a, it, this is why it's called a, con a trap set, because it was a contraption. Yeah. You know, it was a shortened for contraption. It was a contraption that had like stuff all around it, you know. Right. First of all, before the book, do you know what it was called before it was the uh, low boy? Low boy? Before the low boy, it's now called a hi hat. Before the hi hat was called a low boy. Yeah. The thing before that was called a snowshoe. Ah. Because it was two pieces of metal with a, two pieces of wood with a metal things on the inside. Right. And it's just, they used to stomp on it on the floor. It was called huh. a snowshoe. Snowshoe low boy hi hat. That's the evolution of this device. There you go. I think I'm done. I think I'm done here. No, right? you've said have that three everything? times now. We're, we have a lot of time left. <laughs> I, want you, I was hoping you'd play that song with the left hand stuff. Because you want to do that? Yeah. All right, sure. Yeah. Uh, let me show you the groove first. Okay. The, uh, so um, uh, I was playing the kind of uh, uh, steroid version of it before, but uh, it's a great little groove. And since we were talking about technique, so yeah. uh, you know the thing that we came up with to talk about today, you know, so everybody kind of knows you know, where we're going. With this. I hope everybody's having fun because well, I'm having a hell of a time. We have a we have a title. That's all. I yeah, we have a title. You said what we come up right. with today. All we came. <laughs> This guy could this guy could talk about this stuff for so yeah, long. Yeah, I love so I, I love music and the drums. I'm very passionate about it. I could yeah. do this all day. I you're, mean, not, you're not passionate at all. I'm not passionate at all. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I wake up every day loving what I do. Yeah. So I'm a lucky, lucky person. You know, so yeah. and, and I want my passion comes from wanting other people to express themselves on this instrument. Right. You know, I want uh, people to feel uh, what artistry is like personal artistry like what it's like you know and no matter what anyone anyone's goal is has nothing to do with playing in Madison Square Garden it could be playing at the pizza parlor down the street yeah. with some friends or something like that or just you know whatever you want you know I just the watching people express themselves on this instrument and me having any kind of a positive influence on that really makes me happy, yeah. you know, makes me very happy. Cool. So anyway, so the title was about how great hands meets groove essentials, right? So um, at some point you're going to have a technique problem. Everybody does. Yeah. It could be as simple as this, you know. Now that, that's very easy for a lot of people, mm -hmm. okay? Okay, but some people can't do that. And yeah. they can't go. They can't do that speed. All right? They can't. So you gotta start out with, well, just say one group of 16th notes. So their, their, their challenge is going to be through, well, you know, I'm not doing a commercial for great hands. You can either get it or you can't. But I do a thing, and that if you, do, if you follow Groove Essentials from the beginning, there's something I bring in that's called check patterns, mm -hmm. okay? And I didn't invent those either. I didn't invent anything, but I share what I've learned with everyone. Yeah. So, so, and I'm a big believer in people inventing their own check patterns to solve their own problems, mm -hmm. okay? So if you're, say you're a drummer who can't do that, looks really easy for some people, but some people lock up. Mm -hmm. they, they, they hear, they feel the 16th notes coming on, and before they even get a chance to play, their hands lock. Yeah. Now that is not technique, that's mindset. Because <laughs> I say, okay, let's do this, do this with me. Me? Well, you can do it with me too if you yeah. want. Everybody do it with me, do this with your right yeah. hand. Yeah. Ready, go. And they, everybody can do that. I've never had a student yet once who didn't do that. Yeah. All right? And this, because the reason I'm telling this story is because this just happened. <laughs> Literally just happened before I left for the road. This student just was like, they would be playing along, everything would be fine. And then every, uh, whenever a fill came, the wheels just came off the bus and they, you know, weeping practically. Well, not really, yeah. but they were pretty upset. <laughs> so I said, okay. And they say, I can't do it. It's too fast. It's too fast. Yeah. The technique, my hands, it's too fast. And I'm like, all right, okay, well, you know, uh, let's, let's take a look at this. Let's make sure, and in my head, I'm like, this is not too fast, but he thinks it's too fast. Right. So I said, just do this with me. And they did, right? And I said, do it with your other hand. And you go like that. And, I, and then he stopped, and I didn't say anything. And he's just looking at the snare drum. And he went, oh my God. I went, uh-huh. Yeah. I said, it's not your chops. It's not your chops. And I said, 
and I and I didn't tell him, but I took a video of him when he was screwing up really bad. And and by the way, uh, if you have a phone and look at your phone, all right, and hold your phone up, you probably think it's a phone, right? It's not a phone. No. It's the greatest single musical education device ever created by man. Yeah, because you can get Drumeo on it. Yeah, because you can get Drumeo on it. That's really <laughs> why, you know. And you can actually make videos of your real-time crappy performances and analyze them. So super slow-mo is great for, I had one student who, who could not play a left flam, not a joke. He could do a right flam, mm -hmm. right flam. And every time he did a left flam, he could not get the grace note down before the primary. Really? He kept doing. <laughs> he. <laughs> Yeah. I've seen I've seen it all. Yeah, There's not the, I just want anyone who comes to study with me, you will never phase me. I have seen everything that anything you can do behind a drum set, and I, there's nothing I can't fix. Nothing. So I was like, and, and this is a very, this kid who was doing, having this trouble, he was a very visual kid. Mm -hmm. um, I think he had uh, a little ADD or whatever, you know, maybe a little dyslexic, I don't even know, whatever, mm -hmm. whatever. But I could tell he was very visual, you know. And, and, but, he was, and but he was assessing about himself, okay, in real time. He couldn't parse the information in his head to understand, to get this hand to go down before the primary. Yeah. So I did super slow-mo. I said, and I had him play his right hand flaps, and they were beautiful. And he saw the grace, and in super slow mo, it's like whack, right? Yeah. And then he saw what happened with this coming down before this one, and it clicked in his head, and he never did it again. Huh. It was just a matter of him making the connection. And it was up to me as the teacher to speak the language of the student, not the language of the teacher. Mm -hmm. It is, it, the reason I'm pretty good at this is because I am flexible enough to go inside the mind of the person I'm trying to have a positive influence on. Yeah. I do not have this, you know, I don't wear a big T on my shirt when you come in and say, this is Tommy's room and you're gonna do it Tommy's way. I look at what I have to work with yeah. and I'll do anything to solve the problem of the person sitting in front of me at that moment. And using that, that super slow mo was what he needed at that time. You know? So anyway, the kid who couldn't do the couldn't do that, right? So I showed him a video of himself, and now this is why I'm telling you guys this out there in Drumeo land, okay? This is a really common thing that happens, especially when people are just starting to play, and they want to play a little bit faster, getting frisky with their tempo on the thing, and they're trying to get a little bit faster, and they got to play a fill, all right? Yeah. All right. I'm already cooked. I'm done. Yeah. This ship has sailed. Look at my shoulders. I'm done. That's what this guy was doing. In through your nose, out through your mouth. Shoulders centered, sitting with your chest out, calm. And you do a drill. Drill is when you play the fill, the shoulders stay down, and you exhale through the fill. Now, for some people, that is second nature. Now, that's the last time I ever want to have to say that again. For some people, that's second nature. Because for, that's why some people can just sit down behind a drum set and play really fast. Damn. Because they have really fast hands naturally. All right, and you may not, they do, but that does not make them great musicians at all. So everyone has their weaknesses, everyone has their problems to solve. Yeah. So never look at the other person and compare and say, uh-oh, he can, I can't. You have to take care of your own house and do your own forensic analysis, solve those problems. You'll be a much happier musician. Yeah, I totally agree. Right. Every student is, yeah. is so unique. Everybody, yeah. every human who says, anytime you express yourself on an instrument, we are we can make a line right now of all the hundreds of people who are watching this online right now. We made a, everyone who's watching, we made a line right now behind this drum set, and we had people, every single person come up and play this. We would have a hundred different interpretations of that groove, mm -hmm. you know? That's, That's just the way it is, because everybody has their own 
voice. Okay? Okay, okay. We gotta show, you gotta show us that groove now. Okay. All right, so the groove is a left hand thing, and uh, it's a shuffle thing with the left hand. Is, the feet are really easy. It's just... All right? Yeah. And the back beat is over here on the and of two. It's a syncopated one and two and. All right? Yeah. And then the other back beats are over here. Yeah. All right? Looks, uh, may, maybe it looks easy, maybe it looks hard, I'm not sure what it looks like. But that's in. So I'm off center. And the most, that's a shuffle, right? So you have to, the most beautiful thing about that is that it has to be consistent. Now it's, it's in the middle, it's between swung and it's between straight. Yeah. So here's, here's a dotted 16th. And here's a triplet. And here's an eighth. So you have the two spectrums right there. Sixteenths, the ace, triplets in the center. And then you move your dial <laughs> with your left hand. And it gets a kind of swampy New Orleans kind of thing. That's cool. So this is like, you you wrote this groove, and mm -hmm. then you needed to have the technique to do it, and so then yeah. you, that, and that's when you just you determine what the problem is, the right. forensic analysis and yourself. Right. And, and well, I didn't. Sleep. And again, uh, you know, guys who uh, come up with stuff on their own, a lot of times don't realize if it's tricky until some other drummer has to learn it. Right. So I wrote these grooves, and I didn't realize it was going to be such a pain in the ass until I had drummers, other drummers, come in and learn Lion King. Right. And they couldn't play it. Yeah. You know, and then we had, and then we, you know, we come up, we came up with variations and stuff like that, and it was fine, and everything. And then the other guys just worked on their left hand as they took it as a challenge, and then you know worked it up. But I didn't realize I was like, oh wow, I was like, wow, that is kind of fast. <laughs> and but I didn't realize it until yeah. it was actually you know happening at that time. It is, but uh, yeah, that groove, uh, that go, that groove came, came right out of the Lion King experience. So, and so can you play that song? Sure, it's uh, it's the eighty seventh groove. <laughs> <laughs> the 87th groove in Groove Essentials. Yeah. How many grooves are there in Groove Essentials again? A groove, well, in the entire Groove Essentials universe, mm -hmm. between Groove uh, Books 1 and Books 2. So groove, groove Essentials 1 is Groove 1 through 47. Okay. Okay. Groove Essentials 2 is 48 through 100. And there's, you know, hundreds of play alongs and all that stuff. And, yeah. And uh, this is the 87th groove, and this is the first one of the. Um, uh, rideless grooves. Okay. You know, and like I said, I didn't invent rideless grooves. You know, like, uh, like, you know, rideless grooves have been around for a long time. Yeah. But uh, this is kind of cool because it's a, a different way to put it um, in a shuffle with a backbeat and a pop song with African stuff. How many times are you going to do that at the pizza <laughs> parlor? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> oh man, that was great. That's really cool. So yeah, it's a good workout for your left hand, you know. Very good. Yeah. So the other day we were talking. You said, um, and I think we talked a little bit about technique now, right? Yeah. Let's yeah. talk a little bit about the the grooves. So we talked a little bit about hands. Talk about the grooves. So mm -hmm. uh, you you mentioned you said like groove essentials is like a make pretend book. Mm -hmm. What did you what did exactly did you mean by that? Well, in that it's not a method book. Okay, it doesn't like start with page one and say, okay, this is how we're going to play jazz today. And we're going to split triplets up, and we're going to do this, and you're going to follow this method. Mm -hmm. There's no method in Groove Essentials. Groove Essentials is, um, you know, every, every page is a full lesson. And it's written, in, that's, you know, there's a couple breakthrough ideas in Groove Essentials, and all of them are basically right on the page, you know. Mm -hmm. And the fact that like it's a, a main groove with a couple of variations, a chart, and a song. Okay, so the entire thing is built on, and and the playalongs were designed, and this is very 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 important. Mm -hmm. Were designed to be uh, explored by musicians behind the drum set who wish to be musicians. Mm -hmm. So there's uh, the there's nothing. They're all real musicians playing on all the tracks. Okay, and it's um, they're not quantized. Yeah. So, like, if you listen to that track, you know, if we just listen to that song, um, there's a lot of loose things going on in there, you know. <laughs> and like, so, just for example, just just let's just do that together. Let's just listen to this music without me playing along, okay? okay. And we'll just hear it, okay? That is an right. and the guitar is like I don't even know what the hell he's doing up there. You know, he's playing, you know, and it's and it's and it's like what is that? You know what that is? That's glorious for a drummer to come in and be the unifying force. It takes this soup and just goes zap, and you put it right in the pocket, right? Because that was recorded with me, so those guys were there, so everything was cool. But when you right. take the drums away, you realize, like, you know, they were they were interpreting where the beat was and stuff. You know, so uh, so Groove Essentials is a make believe book in the sense that you make believe you are in a band. Yeah, and it forces you out of your comfort zone because nobody's good at everything. Mm -hmm. We want to have some guys who are great at rock, killing at rock. They can't play a bossa nova to save their life. Mm -hmm. They can't swing. They have a pretty good funk beat, though. They can play a little funk, mm -hmm. a little R&B. They can't swing. They swing like a rusty gate. You pretty much just described me. I'm not joking, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a, you know what? What I just described is most modern players. Yeah. You know, we, we live in, a, uh, in an eighth note world. Yeah. You know, everyone who's been born, or you're listening to this, if you're under the age of <laughs> 75, You've been raised in an eighth note world. Yeah. And what I mean by that is that you've had straight eighth notes shoved at you your entire life. Walking up the uh, aisle in a supermarket, you're hearing yeah. you're hearing eighth notes your entire life. And uh, and it's like that around the whole world. It didn't used to be, you know, some of the world that didn't have Western, you know, influences coming at them had, you know, like, you know, African music or Indian music or something like that. But you know, Pop music is kind of infiltrated everywhere now. No matter where you go, you're hearing it. Right. And um, and with that said, that is okay mm -hmm. because we all. This is another big thing of mine educationally. We all bring to the instrument our gifts and our baggage. Mm -hmm. We all have gifts. We all have baggage. We all have things that we need to unload to play this instrument better. What are your What is your baggage then? Um, my baggage is probably I have a too fertile mind. My baggage is uh, I'm always reaching for subtraction, you know, because even as I'm playing, I have 52 amazing ideas and I don't know which one to pick and I'm gonna play them all, 
baby. You know? <laughs> so it's like, so that's my baggage. I, my brain is like, it's quick, it's fast, yeah. and I have to be the master of my brain. I have to be in, t- I have to be in control of what is going on. And I can't play everything all the time. I have to just, just take one. Yeah. Just take one, just one that those other ideas will be there later, mm-hmm. you know? And when you're younger, you think, holy crap, I'm gonna forget this great idea and it's never gonna come back and I gotta play it right yeah. now. My, my, my son, the other day, he's, he, uh, he was trying to say something to me and then I was doing something, I said, wait. And then he said, well, now I forgot it. I'm like, well, if it's not, if you forgot it, it was never important, right? Don't worry about it. Right. Um, okay, so you got all these, you got all these, Grooves, you know, hundred grooves or whatever. What, where do we, where do we start? And how do we know which ones? Should we work on what we're weak at, or should we work on what we're? Should we make our strength stronger? Well, you start with. Um, uh, I always recommend um, that everyone be humble. Mm-hmm. Now, here, this is a great, this is a great question. Okay, the first so, one. This is a great. He listen, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Jared <laughs> asked a great question. <laughs> Insert, insert all the laugh tracks. <laughs> it has happened. Um, so no, that's a great question. So I'll give you an analogy, okay? Um, I have been into martial arts for a very, very long time, and I studied for a really, really long time, and I studied and got to uh, right underneath black belt in a thing, and then I stopped, okay, in this traditional Okinawan style. And then I, I went away for several years, didn't train, and I came back. And the sensei offered me, he said, well, you know, we could put a couple of white stripes on the end of your belt, and basically, you know, as you, you know, remember what you used to do and get yourself back in shape, and, you know, (laughs) we'll take the white tabs off. And I said, no, I want to start over again at white. Hmm. I want to start all the way at the beginning again. And that was after, like, literally 11 years of training. I started again at white, at white, Mm -hmm. you know. And he looked at me and didn't say anything. He said, that's why I like you. (laughs) And... And I think that, so when somebody gets Groove Essentials, and they get Groove Essentials 1, that's probably not right here, but if uh, Groove Essentials, when they get Groove Essentials 1, it starts with Groove 1. And Groove 1 is this. Okay? And some, and I've had some people come in to me, and I've had like, you know, professional drummers who come to me for, you know, they book a lesson, you know, six months in advance, they're gonna be coming through with some tour, Uh, I wanna take a lesson, and we book three or four hours, and and they come in, and and they can play. They can play, like there's no doubt about it. They're professional drummers and they can play. You know, playing on a pop gig, I had some guy with a, uh, you know, mega monster pop person, you know, coming in. And this guy can play, you know. And he wanted to, uh, like, he wanted to dive at the deep end of the pool and learn my, my stuff and everything. And I was just like, all right, here we go, number groove one. He's like, what? Yeah. And, he's like, and, he, and he said, man, I'm way past that. And I said, you just showed me you're not. Yeah. I said, you just showed me you're not. And I said, I said I'm not past that. I said, I'm not, I am never past groove one, yeah. ever. I said, groove one is where everything comes from. Mm -hmm. Everything else comes from that. So I told a story yesterday of Manny Ramirez, uh, one of the greatest baseball hitters ever. He hit off a tee. He hit off a little league tee every day to reinforce his stroke, Mm -hmm. reinforce his swing to have center so he knew where center was. So he always knew where is absolutely his sweet spot, and he never outgrew it, ever. I had never outgrown it. There are guys who have made millions of dollars because they play that beat better than anyone else in the world. Yeah. You know, and there is a reason why. There's a feel, there's a flavor for that, mm-hmm. you know? So um, I recommend everybody start with Groove One. Okay, mm-hmm. and that progresses through the, and don't try to knock them like, oh, play it and knock it down. You know, you record yourself. So you play groove one. So groove one slow. And that's all it is. Yeah. And you just, that's, that's like that for four phrases of 16 bars. 
And when you put that up, and I put it on Pro Tools, I put the, the track on the bottom of Pro Tools, and I record their kick and their snare, okay? And then they see, they see like, it goes, the lineups are like, here's the track, and here's their kick. It's like way early. Yeah. <laughs> and it's supposed to be right underneath it. Yeah. And just that alone, you're getting that, getting that weight, that weight on the uh, on the one. Yeah. That's, it takes a lifetime, a lifetime to be able to master that, mm -hmm. you know? So I always recommend starting a groove one, and then as you progress through the grooves, the first one that starts to get a little bit interesting is groove 11, okay? And groove 11 is a funk groove that has its, the first the first syncopated offbeat that's written constructurally from the, um, from the actual groove composition. Right. That simple move of the moving the back beat to the end of four throws people into a complete tiz. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. And now, right now, at this moment, there. But there are people who are thinking, like, well, that's easy. I don't know why anybody would have trouble with that. You are missing the point. <laughs> you are missing the point. That may not be hard for you, but what's hard for you may be not be hard for them. So have sympathy for the person who's having trouble with something that's easy for you and then hopefully we'll have mercy on you when you screw up in front of them. Yeah, okay? that's a good point. Yeah, you have to be generous with your, uh, with your, uh, uh, with, with your patience. Yeah. Yeah, because people have trouble on certain things and it's tough for them, you know? Yeah. So I recommend going through each one and then you go through the, uh, the funk and R&B groups. Those are always a lot of fun, yeah. you know? You get the one-handed 16th notes going, all right? Yeah. And groove 17 is a half-time shuffle. And then the wheels come really off the bus when we get to groove 18, which is the first jazz groove. Yeah. Okay, all right? And there's five jazz grooves of slow and fast, okay? <clears throat> and I'll be talking about those uh, with Dave tomorrow. Right, stuff like that. yeah, so Tommy's yeah. doing a whole course inside of uh, Drumeo for Drumeo Edge students. So if you're not a member, maybe now's the time. Yeah, if you're not a member, now's the time, because I'm gonna give some of the inner secrets of groove essentials that I've never told anyone before, <laughs> the hidden the hidden, the hidden, the hidden trap doors that are right. inside the book. It's a, it's a, it's the best book ever written, and it's the evil, most evil <laughs> book ever written. That's right. Okay, <laughs> Tommy, man, we, we are already at an hour. Get what? So, I told you. I told oh. you. Just like this. So what I'd like to do? Can we? Can because you have so many tunes that you've been playing here. I would, I would love it if you just play like two songs in a row or something. Two? Well, come on, come man. On. You can do it. Come on. Why don't we talk some more and I'll do one. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. All right. All right. I'm really, there are well, so just, many. Just keep going, man. Just keep playing. Stop it. Stop it. You're terrible. I could do two grooves. You know, we've been talking about groove essentials. I could do tunes, two tunes off groove essentials. Yeah, whatever. Or I could just save those for tomorrow. I know what I'll do. I'm going to do the five today. Yeah. I'll do the five, and I'll end with one of the uh, uh, Monster Clinic tunes. Cool. Uh, so this is it right here, Groove 93. There it is. So this is a great groove, and... Um, uh, I got to give it up for the musicians who play on Groove Essentials because those uh, Ted Baker, Vashon Johnson on bass, Kevin Kuhn on guitar, um, Alan Farnham on more keyboards, and uh, Rolando Morales Matos on percussion. Um, these guys, uh, the way we wrote Groove Essentials, and again, this is another story I never really told anybody, yeah. is um, I wrote um, all the grooves that I wanted to talk about. I had to, I wrote basically wrote the book, right? I had everything down, but I didn't have the tracks. I wrote the grooves, I had the variations. Yeah. And I brought those guys in, we sat in a semicircle, okay? And I pre-recorded the grooves. So I like I play them down and, and I could loop them, right? You know, yeah. and, and then these guys we just we just come up with the bass line and we come up with riffs, mm -hmm. you know, and stuff like that. Before you know, and like we did like they recorded everything in a day. Wow. Yeah, these, that's how fertile their minds are, you know? And I play piano too, so I was playing piano along with them, and, and like, you know, I'd sing a bass line, and think, or he would just come up with something. So this, this is actually, this bass line is all Vashon. He just like, he's, he's, he's bad, he's bad. So he just came up with this thing, and, and, uh, and it's one of my favorite tracks off of, the, off of the two records. It's really, really cool. Uh, we're in the process of actually blowing it out for the conspiracy, the, oh. the group conspiracy is gonna play it, yeah. Yeah, it's really cool. So uh, I'll try to play this, and then if I make it to the end, you can say goodbye. Okay. Right? If, you, if you fall over and just pass out, then <laughs> I'll call the ambulance. <laughs> <laughs>
times more. <laughs> you did it. <laughs> You're still sitting. Awesome. Tommy, thank you so much for this lesson. It's so great to finally have you out. And, uh, you know, from, from my perspective, I've been teaching online for around 15 years, teaching five years before I privately. So for, for me, just from an educational standpoint, as an educator, getting to see how you, how you roll is pretty cool. So, Thank you, Jared. Yeah. Thanks. It's, a, it's an honor to be here. And, what, and I, without blowing any smoke at all, yeah. you've created something really special here. Thank and you. it's really great to see, and it's an honor to be invited. Thanks, man. So, big, and just another uh, thank you to Yamaha. I see, I see Ryan back there. You know, Ken, Sean, Omar, all the all the people at Yamaha Canada, Yamaha US, and Yamaha everywhere. You guys are great. Uh, Remo, Zildjian, Vic Firth, thank you so much. Make sure you check out Tommy online, TommyIglo.com. Follow him on Instagram. He posts a lot on Instagram, which is really because you kind of get to see behind the scenes of, and you know what's going on. In the band, and yeah, yeah, a lot of stuff in the band. You yeah. know, live live views of what's happening. You know, yeah. behind the scenes when we do gigs and stuff like that. You yeah. Know? So, yeah. So so give him a follow and check him out. And and like I said, if you want to check out Drumio, we would absolutely love to have you. This free seven day trial. Go to drumio.com slash trial. We're filming a bunch more stuff with Tommy tomorrow, which you can check out. Especially if you have Groove Essentials already, you know, it's something you added to that book you'd probably want to go through. And it's free. It's free seven-day trial. Hey, so, hey just it's check it free. out. It's free. You can't beat free. <laughs> well, it's for seven days. <laughs> and it's going to cost you a little bit of cheddar, but... Yeah. <laughs> hey, thanks, thanks, man. Thanks for having me up, man. Yeah, I'm going to step out, and uh, so just wait, just wait on playing that song until I get out there, and I'm going to have a That's listen. It's okay. i got to plug in and strap in.